Oh, yes, quite. Okay, three. Two. One. Do you like my sunglasses? Um, yeah. They're kind con- no. You want to try them on? No, uh, sure. I mean, I'll try them on. I'll see what they feel like. Yeah. But generally speaking, these kind of sunglasses, these like... Ooh, these are comfortable. You look good in them. These are comfortable. Those look good on you. Damn. Justine, come take a look. Generally speaking, though, these like kind of more 2000s-esque glasses. I'm not a fan. I'm looking at you. I don't know what you... Yeah, they're nice, right? Yeah. They're just so... They're just True. so like... Oh, here comes the dog. Hi, baby. They're just such a generic sunglasses. That's why I like it. That's why I like them. Those look like sunglasses out of like a 2004 like video game. You know just how I feel about Y2K shit, bro. Yeah. Not into it. It's just, but they're so plain. Like I feel like a lot of Y2K shit looks like really like goofy. <sighs> just those these rounded edges. Yeah. I'm not into rounded edges. That's why I don't, I don't like all, any design from the 2000s. Computers in the 2000s the rounded like shit ass. is not fun. I agree. The, the cars in the 90s were a little more boxy. Cars in the 2000s got all rounded. Yeah, like a, Cam- ass. a Camaro in the early 2000s. It's the, rounded the, like my the, ass. The pointy ones. You know, you know like Chrysler 300s? The cars that look like Bentleys? like they, They're like uh, Dodge Chargers essentially. Uh-huh. You know, like Chrysler 300. It's like a Dodge Charger, but it's Chrysler's version because it's the same company. They I didn't like know that. But th- I'm thinking about like uh, Michael Scott's car. Yeah, well, yeah. So he drives an older one that's all bubbly and fucked up. But yeah. they 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 went back to being like boxy Dodge Charger looking cars. You can have those back. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Well, the uh, Michael Scott car is like my least favorite car on the planet. Yeah. No, that's like an old school Chrysler 200. Yeah. Actually, 300. They're yeah. ass. No um, bueno. The, we definitely said this on pot somewhere before. The fucking 2000s Mustang is the worst Mustang. Like the 2003-ish. Not the Fox bodies. Not No, no. Fox bodies are cool. Yeah, I don't like the rounded stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, So, no, I don't like your sunglasses. They look bad. They look I, good on you. Thanks. <laughs> All right, guys, today we're going to be breaking down the complex situation that is the presidential election. Mm-hmm. Yep. The next hundred days, man. What do you think is going to happen? Hmm? Fuck. Hmm? I'm not saying Some- it. I oh, know. It's just crazy. Dude. Something crazy. Something Fuck. crazy is going to happen. I had some customers today ask me about what I thought about Biden dropping out of the race. And... Um, I didn't say anything crazy. I don't have any very hot takes about it either. But they didn't seem to like my answer very much, which is why you shouldn't ask people those questions. I don't even know. See, I'm so disconnected from politics that I don't even know what the general uh, thing is. You know, like I don't know what people are thinking right now. And frankly, I don't care. I'm getting off this. T- I don't want to talk about this. Get the fuck out of here. Fuck you. Um, Fair enough. Uh, what'd you do today? Anything? And you went to work, right? Work felt long as shit. I thought when I was getting ready to leave and I was like, I can't believe I have to go home and do the podcast right now. I feel like I'm ready for bed. But yeah, nothing crazy happened. Trevor, Ben and Jake came and hung out with me. That's what I was going to do this week for the podcast. We were going to have Trevor come on. Oh, fuck. Man, that would have been way better. Well, he'll be Carl. here. I mean, we could do another. How, why can't I interview Trevor? We all know who the funny one is. I want to interview Trevor. Trevor and I get to sh- sh- shoot the shit. Who's the funny one? Come on. Who do you think's the funny one, Carl? I think we both are funny because of each other's reactions to things. I'm the funny one. <laughs> Carl's. <laughs> ca- I'll, ca- I'm the goofball. Carl's the intellectual. That's how I see the, our dynamic, Carl. Okay. <laughs> sure. Um. Anyway, I had a wine tasting today for work. Oh yeah, how was that? <laughs> Man, I fucking hate people who like wine. Like, oh yeah, did you guys talk about tasting notes and shit? That's all it was. <laughs> so we had, they had somebody come in, um, and she's like, "I'm not a sommelier, but sommelier, uh, but I'm just a big wine fan. I oh, like God, wine. that's even worse. It'd be better if she was a sommelier. But she, but that's the thing. Her speech in the beginning 
people from my work watch this. Cool. Shout Let's out. Fucking go. Um, I didn't like that fucking lady. She kind of annoyed <laughs> me. Um, and she was super nice too. So I, that's kind of going to be a hot take for those people. She was super nice. She was like I'm not a sommelier, but I am a big wine drinker. Um, <laughs> and then you know what I didn't like? This is what I didn't like. I am well aware that my palate is not refined. I'm well aware that my palate might I might not be able to fully um, verbalize what I'm tasting, but. I would like say things and people would like say things about what they tasted. And she said, no, <laughs> really? She's like, no, not really. It happened like one or two times. I don't know if anyone caught it. Like you're not really supposed to do that. I don't think fucking, I, that's what I thought. And you know, cause I talk to some people at the restaurant when I'm working there and I always tell them, they ask like, what kind of wines do you like? And I always preface, I was like, Hey, I don't really like wine all that much. I'm not the person to ask. I'll let you taste anything you want, or I can ask my bar. And they're like, well, what do you like? I was like, I like this one, but I just like it because I like it, and I don't. I can't tell you why. And a couple of people have told me, you know, like, like what? why? What's the big secret? Why can't you tell us? Tell us why you like it. And well, there's a couple of people have told me, they're like, you know, when you really talk to like big wine heads, that's really all it boils down to, is I like this because I like it, you know? And I know she wasn't saying, like, oh, you're not, no, this one's good, this one's bad. But, I don't know, she just said no to somebody's, like, tasting note. And I was like, the fuck you mean no? Yeah, true. It's like, Carl, what is, what is, what does our house smell like? You're like, I don't know, it kind of smells like, I'm like, mm. I totally would do that to you, though. You would. That's totally different, would. though. That's not the same thing. Yeah, because I know you, and I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, so I, I, we tried some bunch of different wines. You know what frustrates the fuck out of me? It's not the same thing, but I feel like there's this phenomenon that happens in all different groups of people where, like, you'll see somebody and you're like, oh, my God, that looks just like this person. And it always seems that everybody around you just disagrees with you. And you're like, what are you talking about? That looks just like them. Has that ever happened to you? Or you're like, that looks just like our friend Jake, and then no. you're like, no, it doesn't at all. Doesn't happen to me. Ever. Happens to me all the fucking time. Yeah, I'm like, I think, <laughs> I think, yeah, I know what you're talking about <laughs> because I've seen it happen to you. Maybe I'm just making. Connections. Maybe you just maybe you just don't have a good. Uh, what is the word? Maybe no. Let's say maybe I do you have. Got, hey, by the way, buddy, you got shit in your fucking teeth. That's okay. <laughs> Whatever. You got a, it's just the internet. You got a big piece of poop right in your teeth. Wish where? Um, oh, I got it. Yeah, I you got, got it. It. yeah, you got it. What was it? Poop? It was beans. <laughs> beans. I had Chipotle before the podcast. Carl got the golden Chipotle. Oh yeah, I don't know what's good with that. If anybody knows something about a golden Chipotle burrito, I got one today. That you was know, weird. it's usually aluminum foil. His was gold foil. Yeah, weird. And it was super big. And they gave me a free bag of chips by accident. So. Maybe that's what that means. Carl's got the golden ticket. Yeah. Anyway. What were we talking about? We were talking about you and how you suck at um, no, making maybe, associations. No, maybe I'm better than most at seeing small details in bone structure and <laughs> nah. facial features. Nah. Yeah. Could be. You know, you know I'm going to ask him to do this. Uh, I might, maybe. Oh, if we get it, it's going to be in the podcast. If we don't get it, Sorry. We, our buddy Jack is so fucking good at impressions. It oh blows God. my fucking mind. I'm going to try to have him send me a Tony Soprano. and What uh, else was he good at? Jerry Seinfeld was all right. Elon Musk. He, he nailed. Really? He <laughs> nailed Elon Musk. It was crazy. Because Elon's is such a, like, what is Elon's accent? Can you tell me? South African. Is it? Yes. Okay, now, now you do a South African I accent. I cannot. Exactly. So, like... It's somewhere between British and African. It's weird. So you can't, you know, of, if you, you know, know, if you just do like if if you said someone do a like do a Russell Brand impression, go ahead. You just do the most like the most British, yeah, the most right? British thing. But like yeah. Elon Musk's is very specific, and he did a really good job. That's so funny. And then you know, Tony Soprano. That's a. That's, that's a, a good that's one. That's a common person that people want to do, but he's actually so good at it. Yeah, usually people, yeah, they just kind of talk like a New Yorker, but there's these, this is Jack doing impressions. So let me get this fucking straight. You think that we got to go to fucking Mars? Well, actually, it, when you really think about it, and 
the with, with, with the surplus population. Wait, I don't want to. I don't want to hear this fucking shit. I'm not going to fucking Marsh. I'm never leaving fucking North Jersey. Capish? I got the fucking Bing. I got my Guma. I got fucking Paulie. I got Chrissy. And I got Carmella. I'm not going to fucking Marsh. Okay, we're back. Um. Yeah. I don't know. You know what I'm thinking about, Carl? What? I'm thinking about trying stand-up again. So, who was just telling you to do it? Trevor? No, Trevor and I were talking about, like, doing it or whatever. But, like, I've been watching a lot of Kill Tony. I'm watching a lot of Kill Tony. If that inspires you to do it, I mean, then you probably should. It just inspired. It's a pretty accurate depiction of, like, people trying stand-up and doing either really bad or really good. You know? Yeah. Are you going to try to get on Kill Tony? Fuck no. You wouldn't put your name. If you we were going to see Kill Tony, you wouldn't put your name in. If I had, if I had, if I had a minute, if I had a minute. Well, because when I used when I used to try to do stand up back in Philly, I was like trying to emulate my favorite comics, the Tom Segura's, the Bill Burr's, a little more story based people. Uh huh. Masters of the craft. I think. I'm I'm just trying to make some like you were saying. That you're so good at like connecting what people look like. Just making small observations. This is just joke writing, but like small observations. I'm thinking about just writing, trying to write some uh not one liners, but No, yeah, write one liners. Yeah. They're fucking hilarious. Yeah, like one liners. One liners. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> God, you did you write one? Are you gonna debut it right here? No, someone told me this. But <laughs> it's race related. I don't know if it's racist. Great. <laughs> Let them have it, David. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make sure in my head it's not racist before I say this one. Because I don't think it's racist at all. All right. Well, then you uh, prob- I'm, I'm you probably risk have it. a I'm good gauge of it. I'm not going to risk it. I'm not going to risk it. All right. I'm not going to risk it. Um, what do you call a <laughs> ja- uh, uh, Japanese and Filipino person? I don't know what, David. A jalapeno. <laughs> <laughs> is that racist? I don't know. I don't, I don't think, think so. so right? It's just funny. I don't think so. Ooh, sorry it's if it was. It's just wordplay. Yeah. Um, There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, so I'm going to maybe try to write some one-liners or something like that. Um, yeah. All right. What you do you got, got for me, Carl? But, no, I'm just going on my phone because I don't want to speak to you. <laughs> are you what looking at music suggestions? Uh, no, I don't have any. What I got you, a book suggestion. What are you looking at? Would you just put? Would you pick your phone up for? Right I was. There? I don't even know. I was looking at Spotify. I think to get a music suggestion, but then I opened it and realized I didn't have any. I, music I suggestions. did the same thing. I don't have any music suggestions either. But we have to come up with something. So my suggestion is Mary Jane's Last Jan- Last Dance by Tom Petty. What a classic! Am I right? I don't even think I know that song. Are you are you a Tom Petty fan? I guess not. Nope. Because that's one of his biggest songs. Tom Petty's sick, dude. Tom Petty's Free Fallen, right? Yeah. That's that guy. I fuck with Free Fallen. Free. I've been listening to Eric Clapton more recently. Really? That guy's sick. I couldn't see you getting into it. Yeah. I just put on the radio station a lot at work these days and in the car sometimes. It's cool. I like it. I like his side of classic rock as a whole. It's cool. Why? What about it? What about it? I like the guitar tones and I like the songwriting a lot. It doesn't, it feels like it stands a little bit outside of just like Rolling Stones, Beatles, Led Zeppelin kind of songwriting, but it's not full jammy, but sometimes it gets a little jammy. It's cool. Hmm. And there's a lot of different moods. Eric Clapton writes some like really hard fucking songs. And then he also writes like really nice love songs and shit. So I like it. Dynamic, so to speak. Interesting. I finished my Rick Rubin book. I know I've talked about this on the podcast months and months and months ago, because I started list. I I listen to audiobooks. Um, sorry, months and months and months ago, I like listened to a bunch of it. Took a break. Came back to it. Finished it. And now I'm on to a new book that people suggested. That are similar to the Rick Rubin book. This one's called The Artist's Way. So in Rick Rubin's book, it's called The Creative Act, A Way of Being or A Way of Living, something like that. It is the single most 
impactful thing that I've consumed um, when it comes to creativity and the creative process. But like by far, um, it's amazing. Talks about tapping into like the the pool of the universe and things around you for creativity and this book, The Artist's Way, from what I've gotten to so far, also talks about it. The Artist's Way, Rick Rubens is very overarching, like this is the theory behind it. The Artist's Way is a little more tactical. You know, the author, she talks about these things, they call them morning pages, which if you've looked into creative writing or anything like that, every fucking person has some sort of exercise that is of the same essence. Morning pages, every day you wake up and you just write. Free form write. Don't stop your pencil until hers is you beat three pages. The you know, a lot of people talk about object writing and things like that. And it's just write, 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 write. Um, here's your jumping off point and just keep writing for ten minutes nonstop. Brain drain kind of style stuff. Um, and then also she has this concept of she has this concept of the artist date. I just got to it. I can't really speak on it too much because I don't really know what, it, what it's all about yet. Um, but yeah. Uh, two, I won't say anything about The Artist Way, but the Rick Rubin book is amazing. Everybody should fucking read it. Not only if you're a musician, because it's not just about music. It's about creativity as a whole. And Rick Rubin even makes some points about how... To be human is to be creative. The same. Was, that was the question I was just about to ask you. Do you think that there are humans that are not creative? No. No, no. Everybody is creative. Like, problem solving. Any problem solving is creativity. True. Um, and also, it, it tackles that in the book. It's like, I think people put up blocks. They put up blocks in their own head because they're like, no, I'm not creative. I can't. I've never sat like this before. Do you like it? Um... Look be at you getting creative. Yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> creative and like sick. I should like be one of those teachers that sits on the back of the chair. Um, oh, God. <laughs> that's douchey, right? Yeah. Let's get into it, kids. <laughs> Don't, come on, dude. <laughs> All right. <laughs> let's, let's All rap. right, guys. Let's, let's rap. Let's, let's talk r- about it. <laughs> Tell me what's going on in your world, kids. Anyway, something going on at home, buddy. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Um. Anyway, so <laughs> something going on at home, buddy. So, you know, I think of I think of you in such a different way than the rest of these kids. Yeah, you're just you're not like the other kids. <laughs> Fuck, dude. I'm in love with you. <laughs> Uh, All right, so those, what, 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 real quick before we move on, what were the names of the books again? Rick Rubin's The Creative Act, A Way of Being, and The Artist's Way by... This is like really hurting my legs. You can, we'll take a beat for you to turn it back around. No, no, no. By Julia Cameron. Cool. The Artist's Way. This is the 25th anniversary edition that I... I'm listening to. Oh, that hurt. Um, yeah, take a listen. No, I think everybody's creative. Cool. To, you know, it I doesn't mean, matter what you're doing. Like, everyone's some sort of creative. The one thing... Um, you, th- no, go ahead. Yeah. No. <laughs> I'm not done. <laughs> the thing that I really like that is weird, I don't know how it sits with me yet, but... Um, in both of these books, they're talking about how a lot of creativity, we feel like we, co- like a lot of things, it's like we come up with them. And if you can abandon that idea and abandon, like, for lack of a better word, like abandon the ego when it comes to the things you're creating and be like, it's not my song. Like, it's just, that's, it's less about creating out of nothing and more about channeling through yourself and through your lens, thinking of your brain and yourself as a prism to channel light into 
whatever you you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I kind of I kind of fuck with it. That's interesting. I kind of fuck with it. And then what I've been how I've been thinking about these brain drain activities, these these morning pages just like writing um is trying to teach myself to not second guess and to not think about what do I want to say? What should I say right now? And just that practice of the second that thing enters your head, throwing it on the page and thinking of it as like, there's a reason that I'm thinking about that. And it's like, you know, culmination of everything that happened up to this point and like kind of training that muscle to just like go with it. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. I could, I could fucking change my mind on all this in a week, but it's, I've been interested in it recently. That's cool. Are you ever going to read these things? Um, first off, fucking attitude in your fucking tone of your voice. I'm just curious. If, I've never gone back and read a single journal. Jur- oh, jur- I thought you meant the books journal. because I'm listening to them on audio. No, the things you're writing. Uh, you're not supposed to for a few weeks. Yeah. I've, mm. I've personally never gone back and read any journals of mine ever. Ever? Very rarely. I mean, you know, like... I've gone back real quick, like, and I've never read full journal entries. I've gone back just to, like, kind of track where I was at mentally at the time. But, yeah, yeah. no, I've never, like... I don't really list, look back. You're not really supposed to. I don't think that's the point. Yeah. No, but I was just curious. I, I, I was curious what you, if you ever wanted to, if any of this writing was thing, were things that you would want to go back and look on, or if it was just... You know, I don't know. I just started it. It's only been a couple days. Cool. Apparently, you're not supposed to go back and read them, um, at least for a few weeks. <laughs> but you thought I meant the books? Cause yeah, I did. Cause I thought listening. you were being a fucking asshole because I'm <laughs> listening to audiobooks. No, that's fine. I don't yeah, have, to have a problem. I with fucking that. know it's fine. I'm not saying it's not. Cole, <laughs> my guitar player, Cole, who gets on my case because I'm a slow reader. How many books has he read? Yeah, good fucking question. How many books have you read, Cole? Who fucks this guy? I might have dyslexia. That's fair. I was tested for dyslexia when I was a kid, though. Oh, so my, you don't have it. I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my, my parents thought I might have it. Because they're like, this kid can't fucking read. Fair concern. And then they took me to like one of those things. The fucking, uh, what's it called? Electric chair. <laughs> Yeah, they took me to the electric chair, and they started shocking me. And they're like, <laughs> read, the, read the board! <laughs> they put a collar on you, and every time you messed up reading out loud, they shocked you. Yeah. And then now I can read. Um, Very nice. What books have you read, Carl? I, my list of things that I want to read is long. I have not read When was read the last them. time you finished a book? God, like... Two years ago, three years ago. What book was it? Um, nice, nice. Yeah, it's well. I'm thinking it's no, no. It's a lot further back. I was, was going to say all the light we cannot see, and it was in like 2019. That's when I finished. What was it book. about? It's like a story. It's like no a, shit. It's a fucking story. Well, it's not like a nonfiction book, you know. It's, all books have story. Okay, it's uh, it's about a. I've talked about it on the pod before, I think. It's about a blind girl in France in World War II, and then it also it tells her story alongside uh, the story of a Hitler youth officer who helps invent a radio that they use to triangulate Russian soldiers' positions and kill them. And so he helps the Nazis, and she lives in France and is blind. And then eventually... His brigade takes over her town, and they meet, and whatever. It's a really good book. You ever read The Kite Runner? No, what's that about? I don't know. I just remember that was like <laughs> a, that was like a hot book when I was younger. I remember seeing that in all like the school libraries. I feel like. Yeah, I've started a lot of books. I've gotten pretty far into a lot of books, but that was the last one that I was like hooked on and finished. Why don't you think you read a lot of books? Hmm, I don't know. I honestly, I think it's because I just like don't think to sit down and read. 
because I do like reading, but when I do, but I just never am like, I'll read right now. I'm always like, I think you got to read before bed. Yeah. Something like that. Instead of, instead of being on your phone, instead of memeing, instead maybe of I'll memes. try it. Instead of memes, you got to read. Let's, um, let's do some half year resolutions, shall we? I'll read instead of meme. I don't. I don't want a half year resolution. Why? Wait, we should figure out. What, do we? Huh? We set our resolutions on the podcast, didn't we? Yeah. Man. I mean, I remember one of mine was to complain less, but we literally have a podcast that is essentially just me complaining. So, good job, Carl. You're doing sick, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing um, fucking sick. Cool. Oh, guys. So we've talked about it a bajillion times. Our favorite music festival, Desert Days. Oh, yeah. Finally dropped their lineup. And let me tell you, they put it on hold for a year. Right? They were supposed to happen last year, and they said, we're going to hold off. We don't want to... We want to get a good lineup for you guys. And then they postponed it to this year, and they kept pushing the lineup back. They didn't announce it. They didn't announce it because they wanted to make sure they secured the best people. And they came up with a very... Mediocre fucking lineup. Let me tell you what. Let me tell you what. I know the Jack White is one of the headliners. Um, and I know some of you guys, people who like Jack White, love Jack White. Um, I have the Cigarettes dog. After Sex, which I think I know that band. Cigarettes After Sex. Alex G. Alex G is cool. People love Alex G. Uh, the Mars Volta. I've never listened to a second of their music. Thundercat. Pretty sick. Fleet Foxes. 100 Gex. Sleep. Liz Fair. And then we're just going to start getting smaller and smaller here. Mark Ribele. Mark Ribele will be cool. Um, Molcat Doma. Which is... An odd choice, but they're fun. A they would be fun for the middle of the desert, actually, to Who? be honest. Molcat Doma. Molcat Doma. They blew up because of their one song on TikTok. Uh, give me one second. No. Oh. Sounds just like a fucking 80s meme. Did you listen? Oh, put it up to the mic. Yeah, all right. Yeah, that one. The fucking when uh, Wednesday came out and everyone was doing the dance to that song. Oh, I cool. I didn't know it was a song that she danced to in that. I don't think it was in the show, but it was like around the same time. Uh, it was like me dancing to like 80s goth. Um, Nick Hakeem. Nick Hakeem. And then one of my casual, I don't really, I, I've never met him in person, but I like know him through the internet and like I've talked to him a good bit. Uh, Marlon Funaki is playing... Um, Desert Days this year. Congratulations. There's a, there's a couple people that I'm excited about, but I, I don't think it's enough for me to want to buy tickets. To be yeah. Honest. Like, I don't know. The, Frankie the, and the Witch Fingers are going back. Fuck yeah. Love Frankie and the Witch Fingers. Uh, Tropical Fuck Storm. They're lit. Wine Lips is lit. Wine Lips is lit. There's a band on here called Black Sabbath Cover Band Rehearsal. It's kind of a do you crazy. Think it would, okay. It's funny. I love that band you name. Yeah. One minute. Do you think it would be funnier if they didn't? cover black sabbath songs and oh that my was god yeah that would be so fucking yeah funny. way better <laughs> i hope that's what they are yeah do you think they have a spotify let's look it up real quick hang on i'm gonna go fast because we don't have a lot of time help help black sabbath cover band god it's not coming up yeah that's cover probably. band rehearsal. I don't think they have a. It's probably because all of the songs are on Black Sabbath's Spotify because they're a Black Sabbath cover band. Yeah, but I just thought if they had the music of their own, they would have a Spotify called Black Sabbath cover band rehearsal. All right, it's time for us to go. Love you. Goodbye. Please subscribe. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Um, comment who's the funny one. No. Me.